Hey guys, Mr. Milton here. Today we're going to work on factoring special cases. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify and factor a polynomial that is a special case. I want to remind you that this is not required for you to know these special cases, but if you understand what you're looking for, you can make some problems a little bit easier. Okay, so let's look at special case number one. Um, you'll see that it is a trinomial where a does not equal one. And so what we'll try to do is we're going to try to um, use the X box method. We're going to find two numbers that multiply to give us 4 times 9, 36, and add to give us 12. Okay? Those two numbers, at multiplying to give us 36 and add to give us 12, are 6. So then we'll take those terms, we'll put them in our box. Okay? And so, uh, first term is in the first box, last term is in the last box, and then these two numbers will be in these boxes go through each row in each column and take out our GCF. That's going to be 2x, that's going to be 2x, that's going to be 3, that's going to be 3. And so our binomials are 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. Okay, what do you notice about the binomials? They are the same. Okay, and so since the um, they are the same. And since they are the same, um, we could rewrite it as, instead of saying 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, we could rewrite it as 2x plus 3 squared. Okay, so you can, might remember that from our um, special cases multiplying. All right, now let's look at the original polynomial. What do you notice about the first and last terms? You should see that they're both perfect squares. Okay, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared. And you should see that they're both positive. If we see that, that's an indication to us that this is going to be a square binomial. And so it'll be a little bit easier for us to get to the answer. Notice that this is 2x squared of 4x squared, and this is 9, 3 squared of 9. Okay? So if the first and last term of polynomial are perfect squares, then the problem is a special case. It is false. Okay, and that's why you must check your answer. Okay, even though that will give you an indication that, hey, maybe this is a special case, it does not have to be a special case. Again, these shortcuts, if you don't treat them right, um, are not good for you. Okay, so you can try to do the shortcuts. Um, if you understand them, they're great. But if you don't, go ahead and stick with the, the basic stuff so that you understand it. All right, so. I'm looking at this problem, I see 9x squared, I see 25. I notice that my first and my last term are positive um, perfect squares. And so I say, okay, well that means, see square root of this, 3x and 3x, square root of 25 is 5 and 5. Okay, now this middle term is negative, so I'd say, okay, let's say that means this has to be negative. So then we could multiply this out and check. 3x squared, that's 9x squared. We know that. We know this is going to be positive 25. We know that. That would be negative 15x, negative 15x. Okay? And so this one works out. So we have 3x minus 5 squared. And that shortcut did save us some time. Okay? Try this next one. we got 16 and 1. So we see they're perfect squares. Um, and we see that they're both positive. So we say, okay, square root of 16 is 4. 4x, square root of 1 is 1. Okay, And so 4x, that's 16x squared, then that'll be plus 4x, plus 4x, plus 1. So notice that this would be 8x. So this doesn't work in this case. The shortcut will not work in this case, and so in order to factor it, we'll have to actually do our same, our old method. So we'll try to find two numbers to multiply to give us 16, Add to give us 10. Those two numbers are 2 and 8. We put it in our box. Gotta start drawing my box better. Okay, put it in our box here. First term in the first box, 16x squared. Last term in the last box, 1. 2x, 8x. Go through each row and each column. Take out our GCFs. And so then we have 2x plus 1. 8x plus 1. Alright, so we might have even added a few 
um, seconds to have a problem trying to check for this shortcut. Okay, which I guess you win some, you lose some. If you understand, if you understand the shortcut, then not really too big of a deal. All right, number three, and I kind of got away from this, so I want to make sure I, I remind you guys that anytime A is not one, you should look for the GCF. Okay, I kind of understood that 9 of 25 didn't have a GCF, 16 and 1 didn't. But here I have 3x squared, 24x, 48. I see that 3 goes into all of those. So I'm going to factor that 3 out. That will leave me with x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay, and now I'm going to look at this and I see that, hey, this is a perfect square. 1 is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. They're both positive. Let's see if it's going to be x plus 4 and x plus 4. Okay, again, I'm getting that because the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 16 is 4, and this middle sign is positive. And then when I distribute, 4x plus 4x is 8x, so it will work. So then my answer would be 3x plus 4, I could say squared, or I could say 3x plus 4 times x plus 4. Alright, try this last one. This last one is probably a reason why you'd want to try the shortcut just because you would have to deal with such large numbers in your box. Okay, but try that one. Bring that to class for me. Alright, let's look at special case number two. Special case number two. Got it. Um, this special case is easier to spot because the middle terms cancel out. And the last term is a perfect square. We'll say negative. Is negative. All right. For this to happen, the middle terms of the binomials, or we'll say the last terms of the binomials, because we're talking about the binomials, must have the same number with different signs. Different signs. Okay. Now notice how both the first and last term again are perfect squares. And the answer to the problem above goes like this. I'm using the square of 9x squared, which is 3x. That'll be in both places. The square of 16, which is 4, and that'll be in both places. And like I said, the signs will be different signs. Okay, so 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. Again, that shortcut kind of eliminates using the box method for us in this case. Alright, so let's look at some problems together. Number 1, we have 49x squared minus 1. Alright, and so I say, okay, this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square, and there's a minus there. So I have 7x square root of 49x squared 1, which is the square root of 1. No middle terms, so I know they cancel out. Alright, for number 2, give, um, well now, notice here, and this is important to see, this is a plus sign between the two. Plus sign between the two is not the same situation, right? Up here we have minus. When it's minus, we have a difference of squares. Here, we can't do it. This is as simplified as it can go. Okay, so our final answer, really, if we want to factor it, this is as factored as it gets for us. Okay, and then um, the final one that we're going to do together um, here, um, we have 12x cubed minus 3x. Okay, this x cubed, like I said before, this is a hint to us that, hey, maybe we can factor some GCFs out. And here we can see that there's a GCS between the two, 12 and 3. They both have 3 as their greatest as a factor. And then x cubed and x, they both have x as a factor. So we're going to factor that out. We have 3x factored out then, and what's left inside is 4x squared minus 1. And so now we're going to factor here. You see that this is a perfect square minus a perfect square. So 3x on the outside. And then the square of 4x squared is 2x. Write that both places. The square of 1 is 1. 
plus 1, minus 1. Okay. Again, this is a shortcut, but you do not have to use the shortcut. Um, actually, I'll do number 4 with you just because we have, hadn't had to use the shortcut. Okay, so for number 4, notice that we have, oh, that's an ugly number, but we'll work on, I guess this is a good time to do it. Notice that we have um, A as 100 and C as negative 81. We could rewrite this problem if we wanted to as 100x squared plus 0x minus 81. And do the same box method that we had done with any other problem. Okay, try to find two numbers that multiply to give us 8100. And at the same time, the as to give us 0. Now, here's the big clue for us. If two numbers add to give us 0, when we add them together, we get 0. Then that hit, that should be a hint that, hey, what two numbers can you add together and get 0? Well, you could do 0 plus 0, but that wouldn't make sense because that wouldn't multiply to give you anything. The other option would be to have numbers that are the same with opposite signs. And so, when you have that you need to add to get 0, you could say, okay, I need that number. I need the square root of that number because that's the only possibility that I have a number and another number come together to be 0. And so, this would be 90 and negative 90 because 90 plus negative 90 is 0. All right, and then I use my box method first term in the first box, 100x squared, last term in the last box, negative 81, and then I use 90x and negative 90x. Then I go through each row and each column and take out my GCF, so here's 10x, 10x, here is um, 9 and negative 9. So I have 10x plus 9, and I have 10x minus 9. Okay, so you see um, that process and how that works without a shortcut. Okay, so the shortcuts again can be helpful, but if you don't get the shortcuts, please don't don't bog yourself down with them. They're they're not helpful enough to to be confused the rest of the way. Okay, you notice that there are only two special cases where these shortcuts are going to come into play that we're talking about. Okay, so um, hopefully you understand the, um, the shortcuts, but if you don't. Box method's the way to go. That works for all of them as well. All right, see ya.